So I think the best place to start human, uh, human um, physiology is to start with the basics and it doesn't get more basic uh, than looking at the cell itself. Why are we going to start here? Well, the cells of the body, they make up the tissues of the body, the tissues make up the, you know, the organs and it's basically the organ systems, you know, that we study in physiology and how they interact with each other to make the human body work. So let's start with having a look at the cell and we're going to look at the overall different components of it to start with uh, and then we're going to go into each one in more detail in later videos. But let's just look at how it's structured first. So to start with we have a cell membrane and this this is the border of the cell. This is I'm going to use the analogy of a of a, of a city um, for describing ourselves because that's what they are. You know, the independently functioning cities that do interact with with other cities around them, other cells, um, but in themselves, you know, have got their own unique individual features that allow them to survive. And the cell membrane is is the city walls. It's it's the boundary of the cell. And it has a protective feature, as we'll learn about in you know later videos. It's comprised of a phospholipid bilayer, and it's got a unique characteristic that present, prevents um, movement of 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 dissolved of water soluble um, you know ions through through it. Um, other particles can go through it, and it's got a lot of control over what particles can pass through it by the use of different different channels and and different proteins that are embedded in this cell membrane. So it's not just a, a static wall, but it's actually a hugely important piece of, of, of regulation, um, of communication with other cells around it, and basically allows the, the cell to control its internal environment and to interact with external um, features. And we'll go into a lot of detail about the cell membrane in some later videos. The second part that we want to talk about is that there's a lot of particular internal um, internal uh, structures within the cell um, that really give it some you know have important characteristics um, the first one we'll go through very quickly is the nucleus everyone probably knows what the nucleus is so we'll just quickly go over it um, for a bit of revision uh, the nucleus is where the genetic material of the cell is contained so it's a it's a double bilayer membrane um, so each one of these is, is, is a phospholipid bilayer and they're connected um, they've got little holes, they've got nuclear pores in them which um, allow the movement of genetic material um, or not the genetic material itself, but codes from that genetic material to pass into the uh, to the cell cyt cytosol. The cy cell cytosol is just being this liquid area that's that's external to uh, to these structures. So, two we have the nucleus, and let's say here in here we've got a lot of we've got the genetic material, uh, the DNA, which is which is generally you know it's free floating. It can can be more concentrated at different times in the cell cycle, as again, as we'll talk about in more detail in later topics. Of note, there's, there's, a, there's a, a darker part of a cell if we're looking at it under a, under a microscope, um, and this is, it's a more a darker area that you might see, particularly in in uh, metabolically active cells, uh, and this is called the nucleolus. Nucleolus, and this is the part of the cell that's made up of of, um, sort of intermediate products of, of protein synthesis. That's what you know. DNA is 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 a, is a blueprint. DNA is the, is the, the the nucleus. If we're continuing our analogy of a city, is the town hall, and the DNA is all the important you know information, all the documents that 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 tell the rest of the cell how to work, and the nucleus is is an intermediate part of this protein synthesis. It's where you know RNA is is, is collected uh, in preparation for protein. For protein synthesis, um, and so the nucleolus is very is very visible in, in cells that have got on that have got a lot of process a lot of uh, protein synthesis ongoing. So you know cells that are uh, highly secretatory uh, will have a big nucleolus, whereas whereas cells that aren't may not have one visible at all. So that's the nucleolus. We'll expand on to some further cell organelles now, um, and one of the most important to to be aware of, and we'll go into detail, is something um, called the endoplastic reticulum. So I'm going to draw it here for us. Um, and again, these organelles have all got a phospholipid bilayer membrane. So this is the same sort of 
that this single line is the same is the same as you know what we're talking about when we talk about the cell membrane. It's a phospholipid bilayer um, that prevents movement of of of, um, of water soluble molecules through it. Um, due to, as we'll find out a bit later, it's got, it's got a very hydrophobic centre. And this is basically, continuing on algae, this is where protein, um, well, mole molecular synthesis occurs really. And as we'll find out a bit when we talk about um, protein synthesis, um, there's two types of endoplastic reticulum, which you may have heard about already. One is called the rough endoplastic reticulum, and one is called the smooth endoplastic reticulum and these little dots I'm just drawing on here are ribosomes and ribosomes are, are structures made from RNA and um, they're involved with protein synthesis so here we've got the, the rough endoplastic reticulum and you compare that with further out here we've got you know endoplastic reticulum which is the same sort of ductal tubes um, but they don't have ribosomes on and the, the smooth endoplastic reticulum they've got a lot of enzymes in this in this cell membrane in this in this organelle membrane um, that involved with with things more like lipid synthesis um, rather than protein synthesis so I'll put this here so that's the, the smooth endoplastic reticulum and we can think of the endoplastic reticulum as the as the the factory of the cell. So um, a lot of the nuclear material, the 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 the, the, new, the blueprints for for molecular synthesis that goes on, that's pr you know from the DNA of the cell, it's processed in the endoplastic reticulum. There is formation of of proteins by these. Um, by the, the ribosomes of the rough endoplastic reticulum and there's, there's also lipid synthesis and that goes on more in the endoplastic reticulum. However, synthesis doesn't end there and a further point to be aware of is that there's a lot of processing, we're still talking quite simplistic ideas here, but there's a lot of processing of these, of these um, products that have been made in the endoplastic reticulum by other parts of the cell and one of the most important of these to consider is called the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus and again these are sort of again all these organelles is what they you know these different structures are called they're they've got they're made up of a phospholipid bilayer and um, this gives them you know separation from, from the cytosol um, and the Golgi apparatus simplistic terms it's where there's processing of these of these um, of these, you know, molecules that have been made in the endoplastic reticulum. Um, there's there's a huge amount of different things that can undergo. They can, they, you know, they can have this carbohydrate synthesis that goes on here. Um, there is the modifi modification of the proteins that were made made in the endoplastic reticulum, and it, it also packages um, it packages these, you know, th these substances um, for excretion from the cell or, or inclusion in the cell membrane. Um, and so this is the modification center that you know we consider the rough end endoplastic reticulum here, the smooth endoplastic reticulum is a factory and the Golgi apparatus is where these these products are modified and where, co where carbohydrates are synthesized as well. There's one final um, organelle that we'll talk about uh, very briefly here uh, and that's the the mitochondria. You'll be you'll have heard of it heard of it before um, and I'll just draw it over here and again this is made up of, unsurprisingly, it's made up of um, phospholipid bilayer, phospholipid bilayer, and similar to the to the you know the shell of the nucleus, it's it's a double phospholipid bilayer. Um, so write this down here: the mitochondria. And again, thinking of our analogy of of a city. The mitochondria are, are the power stations of this of this of this city. Um, they're producing the the ATP. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the the energy currency of the cell, and that's you know that's created in the mitochondria um, via you know complex metabolic processes. We'll talk about them later, um, but it's, it's produced from foodstuffs, glucose, proteins, and so on, and it converts into into ATP. And that is the, as I said, that's the currency really of energy that the cell uses. So, 
I hope that was a very rough and very quick overview of the different components of the cell um, the different organelles of the cell and we're going to go and talk about them in a, in a lot more detail each of them um, over the next few videos